This is Twit. <laughs> wow. Starlink launched 49 brand new Starlink satellites, but they didn't pay attention to the weather report, the, the, the astronomical weather report. Uh, the Space Weather Prediction Center had a storm watch in place for the day of the launch due to a giant flare, a full halo coronal mass injection, or FHCME. <laughs> that sounds like a medical team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, a release of plasma and accompanying magnetic fields from the sun. Had they paid attention, they might have held off on the launch. 40 of the 49 satellites are lost. Jeez. 40 of them, all 49 satellites reached their 200 kilometer, 210 kilometer perigee deployment orbit, PDO. Uh, but what happened with the, the storm is actually like a headwind. Drag no. up to levels up to 50% higher than on previous launches. They tried to minimize the drag by putting the satellites into safe mode, which turns them to fly edge on. But the drag was so bad, it still buffeted the device's they could not then leave safe mode to get into their normal orbit, and they started to spiral in, and that's it. They're right enough. Is this is this sky loud? Huh? They, did they fall? No, down? they actually uh, these are small enough. They burn up in reentry. Well, I was hoping we could have a twig contest if somebody brings us. <laughs> I feel like we, we should only pay them. out like 10 bucks for that. <laughs> I'll, oh, give yeah. you that <laughs> grand. I'll give you my flip phone. All right, Stacy, we're giving yeah. the flip phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, flip phone. So I'm, I'm not all up on this, this space stuff and space weather stuff like, say, Mr. Rod Powell is or what have you. But are you saying that? They basically could have just checked the weather report that morning before doing this. Well, it would have been wise not this? to launch it then. <clears throat> yes. Uh, that's an expensive... I mean, who thinks about space weather? Yeah. Well, if you're... Maybe the people in charge <laughs> of launching <laughs> satellites. Right, but that's the thing. Your I name mean, is, this is Space their... X. Yeah. You should probably think about the weather. I'm uh, thinking they had this. checks and balances in place, and this sounds like it, it was willy-nilly. They like, literally oh, make yeah, 100, to check this 100 of these satellites a week, so I think it might well be they went just, oh, screw it, launch it anyway. Well, and, and what if, okay. if it didn't take them down now, wouldn't it, and, they, and, they, and they waited a week... No, once they're in orbit and going... In three weeks? No, no, I think they'd be okay. They'd be oh, buffeted, but they'd be okay. It was because they were hit during their deployment to uh, the higher orbit I that they, okay. uh, I think. I know and more. it may be that they don't have deployment processes because startups are really terrible. And I, I know that Elon Musk does not have bureaucracy tolerance, but this is exactly what bureaucracy and processes yeah. kind of do. It's this yeah. sort of like, here is our checklist. Yeah. Um, and that's hard and boring. And a lot of companies hate doing that. So I can see how this could get missed, and when you got enough money sloshing around, it's fine. When we had uh, the other yeah, spaceweather.com page, I go to every day. John says he checks it every day. <laughs> what, what are John you? John could have saved <laughs> those satellites. What are you looking for, John? John? Knows. What are you worried about? Are you want to bring whether to bring an umbrella? For where the, uh, <laughs> does he want to see the northern lights? Yeah, because yeah, I, I look for that. We used I don't to, go every day. When we did um, the ham radio show, Ham Nation, of course, we would have a, have a weekly space weather report because it absolutely affects your propagation of your ham signal and so forth. Um, but that's a wild story. Um, significantly impacted by a geomagnetic storm on Friday. Oh, interesting. Two days before launch, a CME hit Earth's magnetic field, but it was not a major space weather event. In fact, this is from space baseweather.com. In fact, the weak impact did not at first spark any remarkable geomagnetic activity, but the Earth then passed through the wake of the coronal magnetic eruption. Some sputtering G1-class geomagnetic storms developed. It was one of these minor storms. So that, you know what? This Register article misstates it. And once you get to the actual guys at spaceweather.com and gals, mm -hmm. uh, they're saying, you know, it was unpredictable. It was unpredictable. Okay. It was worse. No. Than, it it was one of these minor storms that caught the Starlink satellites. They didn't they didn't expect it. The Starlink team commanded the satellites into a safe mode, where they would fly edge on like a sheet of paper to minimize drag. Preliminary analysis showed the increased drag at the low altitudes prevented the satellites from leaving safe mode to begin orbit raising maneuvers. And up to forty of these satellites will re-enter or already have re-entered the Earth's 
atmosphere. Do you want to see it? Sure. sure. This is what it looks like when space debris, debris re-enters the satellite, uh, re-enters the Earth's atmosphere over Puerto Rico. Pretty exciting. It better it comes down and burns up than stays up there, there and knocks into things. See that? The bottom of the screen there, that dot. Oh. Mm -hmm. There's another one. Here they come. It's like a it's game. It's like Pong. Yeah. <laughs> no, Missile Command. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what it looks like, Missile oh, Command. Oh, 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 oh. So they're burning up in the atmosphere. Wow. Wow. Have you actually ever seen... Um, it's funny. I've seen it, and it's wild. In fact, I have... My, my trainer said, did you see last night... There were UFOs that were like 60 of them in a row going across the sky. I said, yeah, that's, that's uh, Starlink. They, when they launch them, they're in a, they're in a daisy. They're in a, yeah. like a bracelet. Oh, and oh then they, I didn't know and that. And they peel off. Yeah, it's really cool. And they're like that in all the astronomy pictures. <laughs> yes, exactly. Isn't that nice? All right. Um, See, I wouldn't know because every time I look up at night, it's such a hazy sky here in this area. Yeah, it, I that's never the, get to see the moon. That's your cigar no. smoke. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> cut back. Yeah, cut that's, back. That, no, that's a country, that's a country guy saying, "Oh, I'm in the big city. Oh, I you're right. The sky anymore? Is the sky brighter in in, in North Kakalaki? Well, I mean, it's just always hazy here. Yeah, it's uh, a little hazier here than it is. Yeah, it, yeah. it even trying to get photographs of the moon is difficult because I just don't see it some nights unless it's yeah. three in the morning. Yeah. Pollution. Pollution. Pollution.